I'd like to see you step in a cow patty before you yeah. leave so we can get that on tape. I'm watching very carefully. <laughs> I'm Nicholas Kristoff of the New York Times. I periodically write about agriculture systems and food in ways that are frankly kind of depressing. But today, I'm here with a happy food story. I'm here in Yamhill, Oregon, my hometown, along with one of my high school buddies, Bob Banson, and a local dairyman on his dairy. And my favorite fact about Bob is that he has individual names uh, and recognizes all his 400 plus head of dairy cattle. So these ladies right here, what are, what are their, their names? Uh, Reba would be the first cow here and the one behind her is Dana. And Reba and Dana frankly look exactly alike <laughs> and I'm thinking you're teasing me. No, I am honestly not teasing you. Walking towards it may seem odd that Bob is on a first name basis with hundreds of cows. Come on ladies, here we go. But that chumminess is a reminder that American agriculture doesn't have to be industrial to be efficient or make money. Livestock don't have to be abused to be profitable for their owners. Come on, ladies, come on. Bob's business is built on treating his animals not as widgets, but as co-workers, even family members, because that is how he sees them. They're taking care of me, I'm taking care of them, so even if you don't have a, a connection to an individual cow, you appreciate what she's doing for you. Bob's cows spend most of their time outside where they eat grass, enjoy sunshine, and are free to roam the pastures. That's a contrast to many larger industrial dairies where cows spend much of their lives in huge barns eating grain. That sounds efficient, but in fact the industrial dairies are discovering that it isn't, so some are moving back to the traditional model. But the trend is to get cows back outside um, not only on organic, but, but for, for conventional also. Um, you know, there's so much evidence that they're so much happier and so much healthier out there. One of the big worries about industrial agriculture is the overuse of antibiotics. Bob used to buy into the conventional view that antibiotics are necessary. When he shifted to organic production eight years ago, he worried that halting the use of antibiotics would leave his cow sick. It didn't work out that way. I found no difference. As a matter of fact, maybe an improvement in udder health for not doing it, because I think sometimes you actually were putting pathogens in the udder when you were inserting the, the antibiotics. So, um, so that it became obvious to me right away that that, that was a, a program that I shouldn't have been <laughs> buying into. If you drink a glass of Organic Valley milk, it may come from one of these cows. While you may not know her name, Bob sure does. That, and that, that black cow right there, that's Cheryl's mom, that's Cher. So it's Modern Cheryl. agribusiness has lost its soul, but farmers like Bob find a way to compete on family farms that just exude soul. And Bob's operation isn't just soulful, it's also sustainably healthy as a business for humans and cows alike. If the cow is at her maximum health and her maximum contentedness, she's profitable. So. Um, I don't even really manage my, my farm so much from a fiscal standpoint as from a, a cow standpoint because I know that if I take care of those cows, the, the bottom line will take care of itself. 